Hi guys, Professor Latimer here, the CC Mom Who Loves Science, and today I want to bring you Cycle 1, Week 20, Hands-On Science Experiment, which is all about layers of the geosphere. So I'm excited to tell you guys about this one today. This one was a lot of fun to do. Um, you can find a description of what we're going to be doing um, in your foundations guide on page 125. And our foundations guide gives us three options. Um, to do this experiment, but basically we're kind of creating a model of the geosphere. So we learned um, a few weeks ago what the layer, what the parts of the geosphere are. It was core, mantle, crust, hydrosphere, biosphere, and atmosphere. And then actually on week 20 for our science new grammar, we're learning what the layers of the atmosphere are. So the foundations guide suggests um, finding some diagrams of the geosphere um, and get them off the internet or something like that. Um, I am using Nicole Liams uh, from CC Connected. She has um, she has a good description of some ideas to pull from um, to choose one of these options. So, um, but you'll kind of want a picture that will guide you, and she has one in in her in her PDF of the science script. So she has it all labeled to kind of help you out. So option one is to draw, um, to take half of a, a styrofoam ball. And I tried this and I think there's different types of styrofoam. I think the kind I got did not cut very well. It was pretty messy to try to cut it in half and it's pretty bumpy. Um, when I was trying to color the circles, little pieces of foam kept coming off. So I think there's a different kind of styrofoam that might work better. But I did try option one, um, to take half of a styrofoam ball and just start, you know, in the center, you're doing your core, your mantle, and your crust, and then your hydrosphere and your biosphere, and then your layers of the atmosphere. So that's one way um, our tutor could do this and just bring it to show, like, what, what it would look like. Um, if you were looking, you know, out from space. So that's, that's one way to do it. Option two, they said, is to take different colors of Play-Doh. So you'd start with a small ball and then layer different colors around it so you get um, a big ball with lots of layers inside and then you'll either cut it in half or Nicole Liam suggests uh, taking some dental floss to wrap around it and tie it to, to pull and cut, cut the, the ball of Play-Doh in half. Um, so I didn't, I didn't demonstrate that one, but that's an option um, if you have some Play-Doh. And the, the third option, which I really enjoyed, was drawing um, a model of the geosphere. So that's, I'm also going to show you that one. And this is what my completed one looked like. And I'll give you some ideas on what to do. There's also a really cool document I found on CC Connected. If you just search for Cycle 1, Week, eight, uh, week 20 science. I want to say that the user was Servin, uh, but I'm not 100% sure. But um, she has this document and there are different things that you'll find in different layers of the atmosphere. And then she also has, there are also these two documents. So there's one where um, it kind of has it labeled. So maybe if you have younger students, um, they could trace uh, the, the words for the layers of the atmosphere, and then it also has um, biosphere and hydrosphere. And then there's another document that shows the layers inside the earth, which is your core, your mantle, and your crust. So I think the idea is to glue these on top of each other, and um, you'll cut these rainbow pieces, and these will actually fold away, and you'll get to see what's underneath. So you could peel, fold the earth away and you'll see the layers underneath the crust. And then I think the idea is to cut out these pieces and color them and glue them on their uh, respective layers and you'll get to see, okay, well, what, what would I find in the troposphere? And then you'll see, okay, there's a cloud, so that's where all the weather is. Um, so there's different ideas. I also found just this little, or we have these science nature journals that we're using, and, and this was 
was in it. So it's similar to the one I found on CC Connected, but not exactly. But it has the earth with the hydrosphere and the biosphere labeled. And then there was this three layered um, circle that I colored to be our core mantle and crest. And then you just cut out this little pie shape so you can see what's underneath the crest. And then I just took um, a white crayon and made circles around it. So I don't know if you'd want to use a bigger piece of paper because I couldn't get the circles to go to fit all the way around. Um, but I also colored in these little pictures and glued them on. So if you want to do something like this, you can just get black paper and you'll need some crayons and uh, scissors and glue stick. So I think this is a really cute idea just to have a good idea of what the layers of the geosphere look like and to find a good description if you like while the students if you do this one while they're coloring or gluing um, just talking about what the different layers of the geosphere are and Nicole Liam her week 20 uh, document has some really good information about the core the mantle and the crest and her week 18 document has some really good information about the different layers of the atmosphere. So I'm gonna um, bring this with me um, for week 20 as well so I can read to them about the different layers of the atmosphere. So I can go ahead and, and read to you a bit so about what, so the core of our earth, it's, it's made up of an inner core and an outer core. So the inner core is solid and round, but it's made of um, metal, which about, which is, the metals are iron and nickel, they think, and it's almost the size of the moon, which is kind of cool to think about. And it's it's so hot, but it's a solid because there's so much pressure. So you think about, okay, in the mantle, we have all that liquid rock because it's so hot. But in the middle of the earth, there's so much pressure that all that that heat, it just it's still a solid because there's just so much pressure. So the outer core which is outside the inner core, has less pressure and is, it's a fluid. And then we have the mantle, which is where our hot magma comes from, and it's liquid rock. And then we have our crust, which is actually pretty thin, a pretty thin layer in comparison to the other layers inside. And it's made up of tectonic plates. So it's, it's not a solid layer. There's these large plates that kind of rest on top of the mantle. And they can shift. And like we talked about in previous experiments, how sometimes they move against each other or there's stresses. Sometimes they're stretched apart. And when there's cracks, we get the, the magma that comes up uh, through the lava as lava. So that's some information about what's inside the earth. And then um, the troposphere. So that's our first layer, the closest layer um, to the earth's surface. It's seven miles tall and it holds 75% of Earth's gases and all our weather happens there. So I've got the, the clouds, the hot air balloon, most of our airplanes uh, fly, commercial airplanes fly in the troposphere. Then we have the stratosphere beyond that and that's where you'll see jet airplanes, you'll see some weather balloons, um, and that's where the ozone layer is. And that's just a layer of special gases that protects the earth from the the sun's harmful rays. So it's it's like a layer of protection around the earth. And if we didn't have that, we would it, the sun's rays could be really harmful to us. So it's very important. Then we have the therm the mesosphere next, and that's where your meteorites will usually burn up when you see falling stars or shooting stars. Those are small space rocks that are coming into the Earth's atmosphere and they usually burn up in this layer. Um, and then you have the thermosphere where you can see the northern lights or auroras. So there, if, if you live in like the, the northern hemisphere, you'll see these beautiful lights. It's actually particles from the sun that are bouncing off our atmosphere and interacting with with the particles in the thermosphere and made, making these beautiful lights and um, when we had the space shuttles that's where the space shuttles where orbit is in the thermosphere and then the exosphere is the very outer portion of our atmosphere and 
beyond that is space where there's no air. So the exosphere, that the air molecules are so spread out that you would probably never, um, it'd be very rare that you would encounter, you know, a molecule, but it's still part of our atmosphere. And beyond that is space. So it's pretty interesting to think about just all those layers of protection that we have. Um, it says the exosphere is the last layer. It's 370 miles above the ground. So just think about like this, the way that God has protected us, like he created the world and, and everything on it. And then it, we have this layer of protection around us and it, it holds all the air that we can breathe and we, that allows us to live and it protects us too. So it's, it's pretty amazing. It just all points back to God of his beautiful creation and, um, how much he loves us and cares for us and, and provides for us. So this is really fun. Um, I really enjoyed this this week experiment and I get to kind of take home a fun visual of the geosphere. So have fun with this one and I'll talk to you guys soon.